Welcome to Wesley Impact. I'm Keith Garner. I wonder if you're familiar with the expression, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you for joining us today. I'm glad you're with us. Wesley Mission has a history in Australia which goes back over 200 years. Over that time, we've documented the various areas of our work and kept records of those achievements for posterity, but also for missional interest. Through articles, photographs, video, and of course, on film and television, we have a media library that parallels much of our Australia, our modern Australian history. One person who knows the importance of documenting events is my guest today. Raymond Williams has been taking photos and, and, and building a library of historical events in Australia's Christian history for over 50 years. That's quite an achievement. Raymond's photos have become uh, a part of the, the history and his documentation of the devastation of Cyclone Tracy in Darwin in 1974, the visits of Billy Graham in 59 and 69, at Wesley Mission, he's done a tremendous amount of work at inductions of superintendents and events, and Australian tours of many dignitaries, including Mother Teresa and others. Raymond's photos have been documented uh, in the work of Wesley Mission and other Christian agencies, and he's been in countless times in the religious and secular media. I'll speak with Raymond a little later about his career behind the lens. We'll take a look at uh, our own media department at Wesley Mission, investing some time in one of our clients from the Wesley Life Skills Programme to help on the production of a promotional video looking at an area of our work. Bevan was studying video production at TAFE when he heard our media team would be visiting Wesley Life Skills with a story about one of our clients. Not wanting to miss an opportunity, Bevan contacted our producers and asked to help. Of course, we said yes, and you'll see the results a little later on. I'll be sharing some thoughts on, on Mark 6, 30 to 34, and I'll be joined in the studio by Lorian Smith and the Wesley Impact Band singing Blessed Assurance. But let's take a look at Bevan's story. My name is Johnson Hassan. I'm the Acting Service Manager at Wesley Life Skills. I just got recently transferred to Campbelltown Life Skills Centre, where I met Bevan and I've learned that Bevan likes uh, film production, he likes making short movies. So when I first um, came to know about Bevan's goals, that clicked in my mind and I quickly sent an email to Jordan and Jordan sent me an email saying yes, this is possible. Bevan could have that work experience, he could be part of the Wesley Media team and have that experience for his TAFE. My name's Jordan and I'm the producer in the Wesley Mission Media team. It was really great to have Bevan on board helping us out. Um, he's just so keen and enthusiastic. Bevan was definitely taking a lot in and there is a lot to take in when you're working in this field. And I think a lot of the stuff that he has learned, he will be able to take forward. My name is Bevan. I go to Wesley Mission Camerton. In my dream, I want to do film industry. Um, I want to get a job. Today I learned how to do the, the camera properly. Often it's the little things that will count. So when Bevan's going out in the future and working with other people, doing more film and TV stuff, different production teams, it's the little things simple as knowing how to get behind a camera or knowing how to set up a lighting stand that can make all that difference and help him get pushed onto other productions going forward. So the experience is, it's priceless quite literally. I like this job, like David um, Jordan. That's his great, awesome job with the media. And that's my dream. Come, come like David and Jordan. Come like a sort of job like that. None of this would have been possible without Johnson's help. He was the one who pushed all of this forward. And as, as simple as an email going forward and through a chain of people at Wesley Mission, that has created something that's going to be really beneficial for Bevan in the future. 
I think Bevan's experience with the wrestling media team has been quite beneficial. It's to break stereotypes, getting into mainstream employment, doing things for any other person, or doing aspiring and dreaming for things where any other person would dream for and achieve it. If you would like to learn more about Wesley Mission, visit wesleymission.org.au. You can find help in our community services, connect with our church and congregations, discover a volunteer role that suits you, stay up to date on the latest news and information, donate to support our work and help make a positive difference in your community. You can also connect with us on social media and subscribe to receive the latest news and information about Wesley Mission directly into your inbox. Visit wesleymission.org.au. Please don't hesitate to be in touch if you'd like to find out more about our work here at Wesley Mission or if we can help you in any way. Our email address and website are on the screen now. You may be familiar with the work of my guest today, but you may not recognise his face. Raymond Williams has been taking photographs at the other side, at the taking them side rather than the other side, and recording Australia's Christian history for over 50 years. Welcome, Raymond. It's good to have you. Thank you, Kate. 50 years of documenting history is quite a, an achievement, really. Where did it all start? I would say the first story I did was on the birth of my own triplets in Java. We were missionaries there. We had three children, then we had the triplets. They were the first to be born and survive in Indonesia. That's 1967. Mm. So um, I photographed them. I wrote the report sent it out. That was the first press release. We came home, 67, the end of 67, 68 Billy Graham crusade, and uh, the Herald photographer took photos at a pre-crusade meeting. I know him take some photos on the platform, but then Billy Graham came down off the platform and was speaking to the Archbishop. He was speaking to the head of the churches. And the Herald photographer didn't know who they were. Mm. I did. So I asked, where's the religious photographers? Oh, there, there aren't any. Oh, come on. Mm. So the next day, I had permission to photograph for the religious press. And so it all began from, from something that was an obvious need that you stepped into. How would you describe the, uh, the changes that have gone on during those years? Uh, we have built up quite a reputation. We supplied, we were supplying 300 papers around the world mm. with what was happening here in Australia, something that hadn't been done before. There is so much mission work being done, children's work, old people's home, homelessness, that people aren't aware of. Mm. And so that was my job, telling others what others are doing for the Lord. Mm. And certainly you've been uh, sometimes getting a story out there before other people get hold of it and giving it the right angle, as we say, in, in the communication. What are some of the challenges you've faced in doing this? I would say the biggest challenge is getting in the right position at the right time. Mm. Uh, I learnt from Russ Busby, who was Billy Graham's photographer, the first Two minutes that Bill, uh, Billy Graham was speaking, get in close, photographing the head and shoulders. Even during the announcements, Billy Graham used to hold his Bible mm. so that you didn't disturb him during the sermon. Mm -hmm. After two minutes, get to the back of the crowd, photograph mm. the crowd scenes, photograph the general mm. atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So I learnt from Russ Busby quite a bit. Not to be intrusive is one of the, the things. Yes, you... very yeah. true. Look. One of the things that you did was, and I mentioned it in the intro, was the Cyclone Tracy. Tell us a bit about that. Cyclone Tracy, my wife's brother had a children's home in Darwin, Retta Dixon home, and we couldn't make contact with them. So I had permission from a religious media association to say I represented the Christian media. I found the Air Force. I said, any room? getting into Darwin, they said, yes, we can fit you on a Hercules tomorrow morning, six o'clock from Richmond. But you have to bring your own clothing, your own supply of water, your own eating, food, supply, in your camera case, because we don't have room in the, the plane. I picked the biggest camera case I could find. Mm -hmm. We packed that, put the cameras around the neck, 
and went off. Got up there, found um, churches had been demolished in mm. the cyclone. Spent a day photographing all the churches. Sunday, I phoned 2CH, radio station in Sydney, and got a report through. What's happened to every denomination church? Catholic, Baptist, Anglican, the lot. Then on the, uh, after the phone call, I went looking for the Red Cross because a lady from our church uh, was there with the Red Cross. Family hadn't heard of her, heard from her. And so I found Betty. I said, who's photographing your work, the Red Cross? I said, nobody. Mm. So oh, let's see what we can do. So I spent the day with the Red Cross. They are the only photos the Red Cross have mm. of their work following mm. Cyclone Tracy. Mm. Mm. And I photographed the Salvation Army work as well mm. and was able to get on the last flight back mm -hmm. thanks to the Red Cross. Mm. And so came back, developed the films, got it all out because mm. we photographed it in black and white, colour the lot. Mm. The National Museum of Australia now has that camera case mm. and the three cameras that I use. Yeah, that was lovely. That was lovely. And, and things have changed so much today that you go to a place now, you've got all these amateur photographers now with their cameras <laughs> in the air and their, their phones, taking pictures with their They're phones. They're not cameras. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's how it is, isn't it? It's changed so dramatically, hasn't it? And when I was photographing the Queen at uh, St Andrew's Cathedral, I had a beautiful angle of shot. And suddenly, as she appeared, all the hands went up with mobile phones. <laughs> oh, get out of the way. Yes, absolutely. Raymond, I want to say on behalf of Wesley Mission that we've appreciated the work you've done with us over the Thank years, you. but also for the whole Christian community. Uh, yours has been a ministry, not something on the side. I'm going to come back to you, so I'm not going to say goodbye to you now. I'm going to come back to you towards the end of the show and say a little more. Thank Please you. welcome now Laurie and Smith and the Wesley Impact Band to sing Blessed Assurance.
experience the Galilee and the towns and cities where Jesus was raised and called his home. Capernaum, Nazareth, Tabga, Magdala, Caesarea Philippi, Bethsaida, Tiberias, and of course, the Sea of Galilee all feature in this six-part series as Keith Garner explains the first century context of biblical events. Jesus was born during a time of change in the political and economic leadership of this region. Fishermen around the lakeside was really one of the big businesses. Why Jesus? Why didn't people ignore him? Why did they take him seriously? And what are the questions we should be asking today if we're going to take Jesus seriously? The Man of Galilee is available now and comes with a study guide for leaders, small groups and individuals. For more, visit wesleymission.org.au. So there it is, the Man of Galilee. So you've heard all about it. Useful tool in churches and small study groups. Website's on the screen now. Where's the mission forward slash Man of Galilee? Let me read to you now from Scripture. I'm reading in Mark's Gospel, continuing a journey through Mark, and just reading just a few verses that we find um, in Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through to 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they didn't even have the chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving that place recognised them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. The disciples returned from their preaching, teaching and healing mission and began to report to Jesus what had happened, what they'd observed. They would be physically and spiritually exhausted from their work. It's what led Jesus perhaps to say, let's go to a quiet place. He himself knew and wanted times when he needed to be alone and he would know that that's what the disciples needed. But the demands of the people were so great that he was surrounded by crowds. They never let him go. So often Jesus is interrupted and in the interruption, God is seen at work. You know, I've often said to people in congregations when preaching and teaching that we learn so much in life through the interruptions and the interruptions are so important as we seek God's purpose. The people ran from the various towns and if you go to the Galilee and you, you move to that northwestern part where Capernaum is, you can see the roads how people would run from one place to another and his compassion becomes the setting for so much of his teaching, a central plank, if you like, to his ministry. But some of the verses in this passage, as I, I usually do, I want to draw your attention to. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. They were enthusiastic. They had got things they wanted to say. I suppose in modern terms, they call it a debriefing. They needed to tell him they'd been sent by him, so they would every reason now to tell him what had happened. But it was a difficult time to do so. They wanted to do that, but so many people were coming and going, they didn't ha even have a chance to have some food, no time to eat. So even though they were bursting to tell it, even though they were with him, there wasn't really the opportunity in that moment to tell him all that they needed to say. But we read on in verse 33, there's something that's significant. But many who saw them leaving, recognised them, ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of him. So not only were the crowds around him then, as he moved to be in that quiet place, the crowds would run along the roads and it was impossible for Jesus and the disciples to get some space. In modern terms, the kids would say, give us a break. I need some space to talk to Jesus. Those disciples were desperate to do so. But it's the attitude of Jesus that not only defines this moment, but I think it defines the whole ministry of Jesus. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. 
Oh, compassion. Compassion is a very powerful, very meaningful Christian word. I think it's the power of our evangelism. I think it's the power of our service. It's what makes and defines what we try to do as Christian people in the world. Compassion. You see, compassion are two halves to it. But the second is passion. It's not a weak word. It's a very strong word. And when you see compassion in people, it often results in some of the most amazing things. A recent time of outreach at Wesley Mission, we used as the theme compassion. And we found it was a door. It was a window into people's lives because they need to receive compassion. People who are suffering, people who are hurting, people who are confused. What they need is compassion. What they need is people ready to listen to them. Sometimes you don't have to say anything. You just have to be there. And compassion is practical. It's expressional. It's something that, that is really seen. And in the ministry of Jesus, you see it again and again. He touched people who hadn't been touched. He reached out to those who were on the edge of the crowd. He found time for people. And when the woman came up behind him, he said, who touched me? Even though they didn't, they were not interested, he was interested because he took a concern for all people. So I think this word compassion defines not only the passage we've looked at today, but I think it becomes a, a decisive uh, direction, if you like, for the ministry of Jesus as it will continue from here on and will, of course, lead to the cross itself. If you would like to contact Keith and find out more about today's program, write to us at Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South, 1235. Or you can send us an email to impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. On our website, you can catch up on past episodes of Wesley Impact, find out more about our work, read online magazines and articles, and connect with us on social media. You can also connect through Keith's blog and stay up to date on all the latest news and information from Wesley Mission, wesleymission.org.au. I'm glad you took the time to join us today. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with our guest, uh, Raymond Williams. Raymond, I'm glad you've stayed with us. Before we leave, if someone was listening to our conversation and, and they were thinking of developing their skills in Christian media, which can mean many things, of course, today, um, what would you say to them? You've been around a long time. You've got experience. What would you say, young person comes, I'd like to do Christian media. What would you say? I'd say, why are you doing it? Make sure it's what the Lord wants you to do, not what you want to do. Because so many people want their name in lights, etc., etc. But is the Lord in it? Mm. Are you going to promote him? Mm. Which is what it's all about. And, and I often think of that scripture that talks about uh, our lives being hid with Christ in God. And I think you've exemplified that through your ministry. I don't want to embarrass you. You've done that. And that's critical to any ministry, isn't it? But it's not easy for people to always get it, is it? To take the back seat, to get out of the limelight? No, it's not easy. But it's necessary so that you are showing the subject you're trying to present. And in a way, photography does just that because you're behind the camera, not in front of it. Thank you, Raymond, for the whole of your life, which goes back so, so long. If you'd like to watch this or past episodes of Wesley Impact, go to our website and you can watch them. And if you'd like to write to me with any questions about today's episode, I always enjoy hearing from you. And it's always good to talk to people who've got experience in Christian ministry and life. I began by saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well, here's one for whom that is certainly true. I hope you can join us next week. We're here at the same time for Wesley Impact, the same kind of format, but always different guests, different people, and much fun together, and especially as we turn to Scripture. Thank you, and may God richly bless your life. Wesley Mission operates one of Australia's leading disability employment services. To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.